Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Teapot Tales. This one is episode 4. For today's episode, I will teach you how to set up your teapot to have the most efficient farming system and get those Primo gems, rewards, or anything you need from your Realm Depot or something like that. So I hope you can follow along with some of these tips and make your teapot farming life a little bit more successful. So let's begin. The first thing you want to start doing is make a lot of furnishings. As I told you before in one of my previous Teapot Tales episodes, making furnishings helps increase your trust rank if you're making the furnishing for the first time. If you don't have any Adeptal coins to buy any of the furnishings in the Realm Depot, you can always explore Surumi Island and get furnishings from Remarkable chests for free. Any furnishings with this symbol at the top of it will give you a chance to earn some XP to gain your trust rank, so make sure to use those furnishings first and gain the XP that you need. Something that you should know when you're setting up your teapot for farming is that the first realm you choose might not always be the realm where you're going to decorate in, so your first realm might not be the most important one you have. Since I chose floating abode first, this ended up being the farming realm and it is my permanent farming realm because I didn't really feel like moving any of the furnishings, but I do have a few islands where I got a little bit decorative if I wanted to try out creating some builds. Once you've unlocked more islands in your teapot, then you want to start placing down the furnishings. Even if they're not in a particular order or if they don't even look pretty at all, that is totally fine because what you're trying to do is increase this adeptal energy which is in the corner here. The more adeptal energy you get, the more coins you get from your trust rank. Keep in mind there is a load limit so you have have to limit the amount of furnishings you put on each island, but you want to try to squeeze in as much adeptal energy as possible before the load limit reaches red. If you want to know which furnishings to buy, try to look for the ones that are in sets so that you can place them down as shown here. Another tip I have in the teapot is to place down a land to farm your flowers or grow your ascension materials. If you've gone off and collected some seeds for your teapot, then you want to go ahead and plant them here. You can find these plots inside the realm depot and place them throughout your world. As you can see, my windwheel asters have just finished growing in these and I can collect them. And now I can plant some more flowers as well too. I'm going to go ahead and plant silk flowers since that is what I currently need right now. Remember that you also have the interior to do, so if you think you've ran out of space for your furnishings, remember that there is space inside if you want to really reach that limit. The next way to set up your teapot for farming is the companion sets. So these sets are found in the furnishing blueprints. What you do about this is you get the set blueprint and then you make the furnishings that are required for the set and then if you place the set inside your world and put a companion in it, the companion will give you primo gems and other various rewards. Since all sets have a different companions that you can put in them, you want to find which sets have the companions you own. For example, this one says Kujo Sara, and since I do have Kujo Sara, I might want to think about purchasing this one. After that, you can access the sets you have in the outdoor set menu and go to gift sets. As you can see, it shows the companions that the place acquires and what's required for you to lay down this set. So you can go ahead and start creating those furnishings and then place the set down. Under the companion menu, you can choose a companion you want to place down in your teapot and then you can collect friendship XP for them. I currently have Albedo and Ningguang since I want to reach them to friendship 10 and get their name cards. You want to put the companions that the set has, so if this is the Dawn Orchard set, then I want the companions that are for that set. In that case, it's Rosaria, Dilu, Kaya, and Venti. If you don't have all the characters needed in the set, that's okay, and also, once you've placed the set and claimed the rewards, you don't have to keep the set in your teapot. So if you don't really like the way it looks, you can lay down the set, claim your rewards, and remove it as soon as you're done. In your farming realm of your teapot, you don't always want to worry about the way it looks, since you're only there to farm and gain either XP or just farm materials and increase the adeptal energy in that island. I wasn't too concerned at first about how my realm looked and because I've already unlocked the other realms too, so I have more of my creative builds over there. Always remember to come back occasionally and claim your friendship XP as well as your realm coins. There are a lot of valuable things in the Realm Depot and it resets weekly, so if you need a little bit more Hero's Wit or if you need Enhancement Ores, Mora, or Artifact XP, you can always come to your teapot and it will be there for you. So those are the ways to set up your teapot to have the most successful farming experience. 
Once again, if you found this helpful, let me know. And if you would like to request a video, I'm hoping to get to every single request and do a few more videos as well. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in our next video. So I'll see you later.